I like to jump right in with some storytelling. So okay. tell me a story about someone who really plugged in and took advantage of what you have to offer at Acton Academy Red Rock. Well, I'll go back to our first year and a very big part of the beginning of the year is setting up how systems will work mm -hmm. for the rest of the year so that they can really self-manage. Mm -hmm. And so those first few weeks are really, really important. We entered this time where we were starting to learn how to give feedback to, to each other. Mm -hmm. That was a very difficult thing for some of our new learners. And so we decided we were go going to embark on this drawing activity. And then we were gonna follow directions on how to draw. They could choose what they wanted to draw, but we were gonna follow the direction, draw it, put it up on the wall, and then do kind of like this gallery walk where we got to leave feedback for each other. Well, we had one, one boy who really, really struggled with the fact that people were looking at his work. And he said he felt like they were judging him, mm. like they were criticizing him. He was never used to getting authentic feedback to improve and make him better. So he was coming at it from this perspective of, hey, you're only telling me what I'm doing wrong. Mm. And I think I did all these things right. In, in my in my own drawing the first time. Well, we didn't tell him that we were gonna continue to draw this until we got better and better. This is a page out of out of uh, Ron Berger's right, right. kind of his 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 butterfly drawing. Yeah. And yeah. so we did a variation of that. And so he really he he cried, he ran away. Mm -hmm. We went through all of the emotions you could expect a seven year old boy to kind of go through when some he feels somebody's looking at him critically. And the the biggest piece of this is we did not give him any feedback. It was his peers. Mm -hmm. right. So he didn't understand that. It took I think we went through four drawings. He would probably correct me on that, I'm sure, if he heard me <laughs> talking. I think he, we went through four iterations of his same drawing. And it was interesting because the time, by the time we got to three and four, people were now starting to recognize things he'd changed and done really well in his drawing. Mm -hmm. He had to wait and kind of trust that process. And so talking about it, but then experiencing it were two very different things for him. Mm. And so I remember our first building, it was really tiny, a thousand square feet. We're mm. sitting in this little office cubicle. He and I, after school one day, his dad's waiting for him. And we're just talking through like, what were some of the hardest parts of doing this? And he was so upset and he, he was so... He was upset because he couldn't control how others saw his work. Mm. And so we went through and we talked through the the emotion attached to it. We talked through what the point of this really was. And he really did make some great realizations about himself. He said, this is going to be the hardest part for me. Mm. And he was, you know, he was a young child. We were just coming out of, of, uh, COVID school, I guess you could call it. And his parents really chose to not have him always be a part. So he wasn't, you know, here he is going into first grade. He he didn't have that quintessential kindergarten year like every other child should have had. So he had no preconceived notion of school. Mm -hmm. But this, mm -hmm. this idea of somebody else, his peer looking at him, giving him feedback was really, really tough. It injured his, his, his tiny little soul. And so we had to talk through those moments. It was big. It was huge. You know, he's now with us still going into year four. Mm, nice. Every time it comes to teaching somebody new or who's not quite good and quite not quite good at receiving feedback from their peers yet, mm. he always tells the story. And he goes back to, you know, this was really, really hard for me to hear. It was really hard to know that I wasn't perfect because in my eyes I was. Mm. <laughs> and when when my when one of you, that's my friend, I feel like you're judging me. 
But I learned that the only way to get better is by you telling me, hey, here's the line. Why don't you try working on this part? And I realized that you were here to help me, not to hurt me. Mm. And so that's where our feedback loop within our, our building has turned into. We're doing it for helpful reasons, not to hurt you. And so that changes our perspective and our mind. It shifts that perspective a little bit. And we've got a lot of amazing heroes that have gone through this process that have said at the end, like, it's one of the most valuable things for them because they're willing to take what other people have to say and listen to it. And then that translates into the real world where sometimes an adult might say something, they know how to speak and, and talk to them at their level. And that's where I saw the beginning kind of of this, this stage of when we are allowing them to kind of have the autonomy over what they're doing, how they're advising their peers, it prepares them for whatever life can kind of throw at them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They might have someone who's a supervisor that is more critical. How are they going to handle it in that moment? Well, they're learning that valuable skill right now in order to be able to receive some of that. And so I've heard from families, you know, they're so much more willing to listen during these guiding moments now, whereas before it was really tough. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. would, they would, all the emotion would come out in them. Right, right. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.